see some of our own weaknesses, some of our own uh, failures in patience. And so in the midst of us uh, changing our routines and being more present to God, we give to him any of those little obstacles, those sins, those impatiences that we have. on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Oh, oh, oh. 
Let us pray. O God, creator and redeemer of human nature, who willed that your word should take flesh in an ever virgin womb, look with favor on our prayers that your only begotten Son, having taken to himself our humanity, may be pleased to grant us a share in his divinity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob called his sons and said to them, Assemble and listen, sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel, your father. You, Judah, shall your brothers praise, your hand on the neck of your enemies. The sons of your father shall bow down to you. Judah, like a lion's whelp, you have grown up on prey, my son. He crouches like a lion recumbent, the king of beasts, who will dare rouse him. The scepter shall never depart from Judah, or the maze from between his legs, while tribute is brought to him, and he receives the people's homage. The word of the Lord. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. O oh God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. The mountains shall yield peace for the people, and the hills justice. He shall defend the afflicted among the people, save the children of the poor. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his name be blessed forever, as long as the Son, his name, shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed, all the nations shall proclaim his happiness. the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, 
and Hezron the father of Ram. Ram the father of Abinadab. Abinadab became the father of Nashon. Nashon became the father of Salmon. Salmon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse. Jesse the father of David the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam the father of Abijah. Abijah the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat the father of Joram. Joram the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham. Jotham the father of Ahaz. Ahaz the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh. Manasseh the father of Amos. Amos the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel became the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel the father of Abiud. Abiud became the father of Eliakim. Eliakim the father of Azor. Azor the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Achim. Achim the father of Eliud. Iliad, the father of Eliezer. Eliezer became the father of Mathan. Mathan, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to Christ, to the Christ, 14 generations. The Gospel of the Lord. It's way too early in the morning to be reading those names. <laughs> So in any journey, and I suppose we're all a little different how we respond to, uh, to being on a journey, being on a trip. Um, I don't think vacation quite constitutes what we're doing here, but being on a journey, there's always a time where your body's trying to adjust and it's a little excited, right? So like for me, this morning I had my alarm set for 4.30 and my brain woke up at 4 because it knew there was something going on but it decided to get up early just in case. Uh, we'll get it trained tomorrow not to do that. But there might be others of you where this is so out of character for you to be up this early that getting up is excruciatingly difficult. Now, there's actually a, a place where Jesus says those who offer more uh, have more love, right? So. Thank you for those of you who are sacrificing in order to get up this early. Our mind wants to enter into this mystery because it satisfies a deep desire. The desire is to fundamentally answer the question, who are you? And I don't necessarily mean you or me. But it's the question that if we were to go back in time to the moment when Moses, Moses whose life at this time was very settled and very peaceful because he had fled into the desert, he was now married, he now had some children, but he goes up this mountain because he sees something very peculiar. There's a tree that's on fire, but it stays on fire and it doesn't burn up. And so he goes up, and in this moment, he encounters the living God, and he's given a mission. And as he's given a mission, he says, oh, yeah, but wait, who 
are you? Who do I say sent me? And it's in that moment that he learns not only who God is, but he learns who he is because he now has his mission. Mary has been resting for a while. She has lots of time to herself now that she's back in Bethlehem. There's a story that's always uh, been beautiful to her. She's always felt a very strong connection to it. And it is the story of Moses, Aaron, the train. I will give just a second. It's the story of Moses, his brother Aaron, and their sister Miriam. And the reason for that is because Mary's name, if you were to look at the Hebrew, is actually Miriam. Many of the women were named after Miriam, the sister of Moses. You have Mary, the mother of Jesus. You have Mary Magdalene, whose name also is Miriam. You have Mary, the sister of Martha. Her name is Miriam. Many of the women of the time were named Miriam. And so Mary has had this very fond connection with Miriam. She's also always been not jealous, but always looked upon her perhaps as an older sister because she never had an older sister. She never had a younger sister. Mary never had a sibling. For those of you who are only children, perhaps at some level, in, in a certain loneliness in that, you have a connection to Mary. Now, Mary's actually really happy because she's come back from her visit with Elizabeth, and Elizabeth is like an older sister to her, especially with the mystery that's unfolding in her life. And so she's so happy that she had that older sister time with Elizabeth. She's reflecting on Miriam, though. Miriam as a sister of Moses and Aaron, but as a very special sister. Because you remember the story of Moses? The Egyptians were going around killing all the boys as they were born. And Miriam's mother refused to go along with that. Every once in a while, there are things in our culture that are just dastardly evil. We must not go along with them. Thank goodness that Miriam's mother was one of those mothers. And so instead, just against all possibilities, hoping for some kind of miracle, she puts her son Moses, her newborn son Moses, into a basket and sends him down river. At least maybe there would be a miracle. Something would happen. Well, Miriam, the older sister, believes in a miracle, and so she follows in a very quiet, stealthy way. And sure enough, Miriam watches a miracle unfold. The very family that was hunting down and killing the little boys ends up saving Moses. And Miriam places herself, risking her own life, in the exact right time and place to at least hint at this young woman who saved Moses that there may be a mother in town who could nurse him and take care of him, who just happened to be his own mother. Big Sister has played her role at risking her own life, has saved her little brother and brought him back home in the most unlikely of ways. You could imagine in that moment that this young woman who's pulling this baby from the river and feeling empathy and pity sees this little girl and says, who are you? Miriam had to place herself there. She had to choose to be there in order to be that big sister to save Moses. 
I suppose in some ways Mary was always going to see herself in that role for Jesus. As the one who was going to bring him into the world in the most unlikely and impossibilities, this miracle that was unfolding. Well, as Mary is having time to reflect, there's a lot of commotion in Bethlehem and in every single town, actually, in the Judean and Galilean areas, because Caesar Augustus has just announced a census. And this isn't where, like it is here in America, you can just fill something out or they actually come to your door. Here is, you go home. You go to your place of birth. Where were you born? Can you imagine having to walk to your homeland where you were born? For me, that would be 2,000 miles. For some of you, it would be even a lot farther than that. Joseph comes to Mary and says, what are we going to do? I mean, look at the timing of this. Look at when we need to go. You're going to be nine months pregnant. How are we going to do this? Mary asks that question also, but she also knows that this is more than just Caesar Augustus. This is not just a Roman emperor at work. This is God at work. She knows the prophecy. She knows the miracles that God has done in the past, and she knows that there are miracles unfolding in the future. And so Mary and Joseph begin to get ready. Together we offer our prayers and petitions for today's Mass. We give you thanks, Lord. So we have a prayer of thanksgiving for all of our siblings, for those who looked after us, for those who cared for us, for those whom we cared for growing up. For them we pray to the Lord. We pray in a special way for all those who are named Mary, for those who are named after Miriam, and named after our Blessed Mother as well they can be truly blessed and, and uh, rejoice in being named after uh, two great heroes in our faith. For them we pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for all those who are finding life to be difficult in their journey, for those who are struggling in any particular way. For them we pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for our loved ones who are finding themselves to be lukewarm in their faith who have lost their way, for them we pray to the Lord. Lord and for endurance, for perseverance, and patience on this journey, for this we pray to the Lord. Lord and for whom this Mass is offered, we're praying for the special intentions and healing of Everardo Gudino, as well as the healing of Margie Hamill. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our prayers and we ask this through Christ our Lord.
and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Sanctify these gifts of your church, O Lord, and grant that through these venerable mysteries we may be nourished with the bread of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. He took a bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Paul our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And together we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
blood, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. unable to receive the Eucharist at this time, we offer this spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
divine gifts, almighty God, we ask you to grant our desire that aflame with your spirit we may shine like bright torches before your Christ when he comes, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Uh, just a reminder about, you know, keeping your worship aid and bringing it each day. Uh, and also, the, just the Filipino community is very grateful for you coming, and so one of their expressions of gratitude is a little bit of food that they prepared if you'd like to take with you as you exit. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Amen.